In this video and from logging.php, we'll be checking if the entered username and password are correct in the saved record in MySQL table. So this is where we've stopped at last time. We've we this is what index.php looks like. It's also connected to our database, which we spoke about in a previous uh, couple of videos. And in MySQL Workbench, here's what the table looks like. And we have a username with test1 and a password test1. These were also the two records that we created in previous videos. So here is what uh, login, oh, sorry, index.php looks like. And let's look at uh, the login page. So the login page here is all the work that we'll be doing in today's video, uh, all as comments. But this is what login looks like at this point. So let's just make a link to this from um, from here. So I'll just add a comment. Sorry, uh, uh, it's always confusing to me how to write comments in HTML. We want to add a link to the login page. We'll close off our comments. Not not cookie that just came out, and. We'll add a href to login.php. I will close off our reference. So just to um, show you what the packet or the, the folder looks like, we've got all these three files in the same location. So that's what it looks like in Explorer. All right. And here is what well, as soon as I saved, this is also linked to the live yeah. server and connected as well. Uh, I'm running my PHP files from XAMPP. So when we click on login, this takes us to a login page. It doesn't look very nice, but it's okay. We just want to demo how we can check if the entered username and entered username and passwords are existing um, is an existing person in our so our existing records in our database. Okay, so let's go ahead and establish our connection. So we'll just copy off this line over here. Now the other thing is, um, sorry, I just already have PHP in there. I just don't need to include that again. All right, so we are connected to the uh, database successfully. Now let's check if the current um, HTTP request is a post. So this is what we've indicated here. Anything that will be transmitted over the form is done through the post method. And we could get this information from the server variable. So I'll just start off my if condition. Now if now this is a global variable. And then the key that I'll be, uh, so this array, I'll use the request method as a key. And this information, this will give me the value of the HTTP request. So if that comes back as the post, then we know that um, this is when we want to start validating the work. So I'll just close it off right here. Okay. And now from after we've made sure that this information is all coming through the post method, we can access the details that were entered through the post method using the post array. So through from the post array, we can access the input fields that are sent via the post re request. We can access the values in the post array using ne the name attribute as the key. So uh, let's do that. I don't know what I've copied, so I've uh, will post. So to to access the information we need, we can just use the name attribute as the key, and that'll give us whatever that was transmitted over the form using the post request the request method as post in into our post array. So then what we want to do is we want to retrieve those this information and, and store them into H, PHP variables. So at the moment it's just lost. So we need to, I mean, doing something like that is not going to do me anything. I need to 
store the results into variables so that we can make use of them. So into PHP variables. So the dollar sign and this other variable will be named password. So now what we've done is we've stored the username and the password into variables. So what I'll do is I might just, um, yeah, okay. So next what we want to do is we want to execute the SQL query that, uh, let me just make this slightly bigger, uh, that selects the records from the user table with the matching username and password. So uh, what we'll do is let's put that into a variable called query and using I'm not sure if I said so using the select using select um, all of we want to return all of the information from the user so our table is called user okay from user we want to get the matching username and password only those we only want the records of those whose username is equal to uh, to this variable so we'll put that in quotes so that we can and the password and what we're doing here is we are using the same names that we've used for our fields in the table as columns. So back into here, password is equal to this password. And close off the quotation and end it with a semicolon. Next, we want to execute the SQL query using MySQL function. So we'll use the MySQL query to execute our SQL query. We want to pass the database connection, which we have um, referred to as connect. So that one. And the other variable that we want to pass would be the, the query. So this SQL query. That's our second argument. Now, what we want to do is we want to store the result into a variable so that we don't lose the, the details. So I'm going to put it into a variable called result. <coughs> Next, using the MySQL underscore num rows, this is a function that we can use to count the number of records that were returned in or from this result so let's just copy this variable and we just want to check if the query returned any selected records so um, what we basically want to do is check if the call to this function has returned any numbers so if it returns a number if that number is more than zero we know that it's got at least one record with an existing user. So here we echo the user exists. Else, uh, I might actually close that off. Else we will echo that the user, it's not good to say the user doesn't exist. We don't want to give too much information to the user. So we'll just say incorrect user name or password. We don't want to be specific. Okay. Let's see how that works. So we just want to make sure that I, I've just gotten some, this is an existing user. So we've got a problem here. Yeah, I forgot to do that. So we want to, um, first of all, we know that the connection has been established, so we don't need to display that. It's just for debugging purposes. We don't want to close the connection uh, 
because we're still working with that one so it's telling me now that the user exists let's try with a non-existent user now we have an incorrect username or password so only those two users test one test two with the same passwords can log in so let's try with test two and let me just put in some incorrect passwords so it just doesn't say it's an incorrect password it doesn't give the user a hint on um, yeah so this is a better practice to add more security so here the user exists so that's about it I mean there's a, a lot to improve in here uh, but for now this is how we can start off by checking if the entered username and password um, are correct thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one